empires in the history of the species. America is number 68. And every empire comes and goes and usually tends to undergo unbelievable decay and deterioration with military overreach. We've got 800 military units around the world, 130 special operations in over 100 com countries. Corruption of elites across the board, not just political elites, but professionals themselves creating narrow, thin cultures of conformity and complacency and cowardliness and reducing moral and spiritual greatness to just worldly success. So it's simply about fame, it's simply about material toys, it's simply about status, and you lose sight of what it really means to be morally and spiritually great. To be rooted and grounded in a calling and a vocation, not just a career and a profession. We heard it the other day in Chicago when I heard my dear sister say the greatest story ever told is the American story. Well, let me tell you, as a black man who's been in 12 generations, there's some wonderful things about the country. There's some magnificent individuals in the country, but the American story is not the greatest story ever told. <laughs> At all. That's pure idolatry. Of course, for me, greatest story has to do with a Palestinian Jew named Jesus. For all my precious Muslims, it has something to do with a messenger from Allah that tells us to be in service to others that tells us to have a vertical relationship with a God and that God is a God and only God and no other gods shall come before that God. Yeah. And the notion is to be the greatest privilege to be in America is wonderful to come to America. There's a whole lot of places where people are having a difficult time and you come here and of course we ought to be glad to have folk who get here. But don't think that being American is the greatest privilege. No, the greatest privilege of being human is to love and be loved. And that can take place in Ethiopia, Guatemala, Brazil, Haiti, Cuba, Congo, or Sudan. And Gaza and West Bank too. You can't crush that love. You can't crush that relationship to God. You can't crush that courage. You can't crush that unbelievable sense that the present will not determine the future. That the worst of the present will not determine the future. That some greater power is impinging on the present that allows us to straighten our backs up. As Brother Martin Luther King used to say, anytime oppressed people straighten their backs up, they're going somewhere because folk can't ride your back unless it's bent. You've got too many folks. Yeah, I come from the black folk who have been hated for 400 years. But still talk the world so much about love and produce love warriors every generation. And being a love warrior means what? Staying in contact with the humanity of people across the board. I don't care what color. I don't care what gender. I don't care what nation. I don't care what country. Made in the image and likeness of a loving God. So there's a human connection there. So when you talk about unity, you talk about solidarity, there's got to be some moral and spiritual grounding of each and every one of us and of a people so that we, we don't find ourselves caught up with the idols of the world or as one of the great geniuses who comes out of Florida named James Weldon Johnson with his brother Rosamond Johnson who wrote the Negro National Anthem, the anthem of my own black people lift every voice. Let me say lift every echo. And we're living in a culture obsessed with titillation and stimulation and distraction and addiction that makes it difficult to be more than just an echo in a silo rather than finding your voice. For the first time in the history of the American Empire, it will be the Muslim community, those who are courageous enough, visionary enough, 
to be the fundamental part of the moral conscience of the nation. To raise their voices, defending freedom of speech, allowing these students to bear witness, pushing back on the surveillance state, pushing back on the national security state, and telling America, you think you can militarize around the world and not be tied to the militarization at home, be it cop cities, be it police brutality, be it police murder, or be it more in schools that I go to, especially in the hood where they got more police than they do nurses and counselors. What kind of future can any society have? when it's choked and hemorrhaged by militaristic sensibilities, and then we wonder why we see the escalation of the mass murders day after day after day. And it's not just a matter of looking outward. What I learned at Shiloh Baptist Church is that you always have to not just be truth to power, you must speak truth to the relatively powerless in your own community. I hear my black brothers and sisters running around talking about they got to do X and Y because somebody's black. No, your character, your integrity, your honesty, your decency, your courage is not a function of your skin pigmentation. It's a function of what kind of choices you make that are moral and spiritual that have political consequences. That's why you find Christians going against Christians, Muslims going against Muslims, black folk going against black folk. Why? Because there are some in our own community that choose cowardliness, that choose conformity to oppression, that choose being well-adjusted to injustice and well-adapted to indifference. And Rabbi Heschel was absolutely right when he said, indifference to evil is more insidious than evil itself. It creates a whole culture, a whole way of being. If you can turn your back on people who are vulnerable, who are being crushed. And the litmus test, the moral litmus test, of any people, any culture, in a nation, in a empire, is genocide. If you can't pass that test, then there's a good chance that you're going to be a colossal failure of dealing with other forms of injustice and other forms of crimes against humanity. And of course, in the history of this country, we got our precious indigenous brothers and sisters who remind us genocide. We got black folk, W.B. Du Bois and Paul Ropes and with the United Nations and said what? We want to put the United States on trial for the violation of the human rights of black people said we charge genocide, 1951. Malcolm wanted to do the same thing when he wrote that letter to Martin Luther King Jr. in June 27, 1964. Nobody knew it but the FBI did. <laughs> the first time they would have worked together. Malcolm said, Martin, let's take the United States to the United Nations for the violation of human rights. And Martin said, Yes. Can you imagine what our history would have been like if they had a chance to follow through on that unity and solidarity? Muslim, Christian, but what made them great was not just being Muslim, Christian, but a Muslim who takes seriously what it means to be a genuine Muslim and a Christian who takes seriously what it means to be a genuine Christian. Great. Willing to be willing to die, willing to serve, and always with a sense of humility. Because the benchmark of any mature spiritual life is a genuine humility to be of service to the least of these, to the poor, or the persecuted, the subjugated, the degraded, the depreciated, the exploited. And it means you're in the world, but not of the world. You're going against the grain. And now for the first time in the history of this nation, more and more, there's going to be Muslim voices, especially of the younger generation, that say, we will speak out on moral and spiritual grounds linked to the riches of the prophetic Islamic tradition. 
We black folk been doing that for 400 years. Some of our spokespersons and some of our leaders, God bless them, they run it out of gas. They become so used to being the establishment that they just feel good with being in close proximity to power rather than bearing witness over against that power when their brothers and sisters in the hood are getting crushed. That's called selling out. And selling out is becoming more normal. Selling out is becoming more natural. Yeah. Yeah. And when it comes to God, fundamental litmus test, deny genocide, enable genocide, tell lies to hide your crimes, promote criminality in the name of national security. How empty, how vacuous. But I come from a tradition that says lies do not live forever. Truth, truth is the condition to allow suffering to speak. Truth crushed the earth will rise again. That's the prophetic voice that we are talking about. And that's one of the reasons why we need to work together, struggle together. Love together, laugh together, engage in critical engagement with one another. We may not agree on everything, but one thing we do agree on that we have a relationship with a loving and beneficent and merciful God that empowers us and enables us to bear witness to bear witness in such a way that those who are being crushed are never forgotten and we try to prevent anybody else being crushed. And so I simply come here to say to each and every one of you, in the name of my tradition, when you hate it, keep producing love for it. When you terrorize, Keep producing freedom fighters. Fighting for everybody, all oppressed people, no matter who they are, but it begins on your side of town. With me, it begins on the chocolate side of town. It's true. But I can't love black people, I can't love nobody else. You a Muslim, you can't love Muslims, you're gonna have a difficult time loving Christians like me. But being grounded with R-O-O-T-S in the right way gives you a access to a R-O-U-T-E-S, your spiritual and moral routes that you take that embraces all of humanity in its deepest forms. So be not discouraged. Be encouraged. Be of great courage and all the other religious virtues are enabled by courage. Allah does not call cowards. God does not solicit cowards. You've got to be willing to step out on nothing and land on something. That's what they did. And we do it together. We go up together. We go down together. We pray together. And I'm a hang loose Christian, so I spend a little time in the nightclubs. So we dance together. I know I got some Muslim brothers and sisters. I might not see you there. Pray for me. Pray for me. <laughs> I take Jesus with me, just like you take Allah with you. That's but it's so crucial in this moment. So whatever comes at us, from the powers that be, from Tel Aviv to New York to Chicago to Tallahassee, they will not have the last word. Not at all. As long as we continue to be united and full of power. Thank you so very much. Stay strong, care. Orlando, Florida.